Hey guys, it's Anna J. Wellner with the Author Library. And with me today, I have E.P. Stabs, the author of the Chandri series. E.P., would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm E.P. Stabs, and this is Tama. <laughs> And yeah, I, I wrote the books. I wrote some books. <laughs> the, uh, the, the series actually follows Jocelyn Delore, who is not your typical princess. I would actually say she kind of reminds me of me because she's kind of like a tomboy. Yeah, I would say so. Although I hate that word, but yes, that is <laughs> the apt word to, to describe her. <laughs> a free spirit, strong, independent-willed young woman. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, she's my warrior princess. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I like that better. Um, so tell us a little bit about Jocelyn. Jocelyn, she's kind of my favorite because she's my first character. Um, like I said, she's a warrior princess. She's the crown princess of Eldor. And, uh, and in her kingdom, that actually means she will be the, the next ruler. She's the next in line. So it's you know, it's not going to go to some male relative. I hate gotcha. that. But, uh, but yeah, she's got that. And she's kind of, she's been born with these uh, marks on her arm that uh, everyone thinks is kind of weird and it kind of puts them off. They think she's kind of cursed, but it actually means something else. But I can't get into that without, you know, spoiling it. But yes, gotcha. so she's the marked, quite literally the marked princess. And in the first story, you kind of learn what's behind that and the magic behind that and, and how it plays out. So Eldor is the king, the 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 uh, fantasy realm uh, that that follows the entire series. It, is that it, right? Her kingdom. There are five kingdoms, and ah. in my series, I actually like to go to the different kingdoms. So each book kind of goes to a new place, so you get a little a little change up. But uh, yeah. And do you feature a different character in each book? Yes, I do. So the series is about four young women who are all Shendri warriors, and they kind of learn that in the story. They're descendants from these warriors. And even though each book has its own story, it does also have an overarching story. So as you go, there's always like an epilogue that's just like, and here's what's coming next. And the, you can see it kind of growing. Although the first book is more of a starter that kind of sets up the series and, and the lore behind it. And it definitely starts building. Uh, with more cliffhangers towards the second and third books. But yes, each each of the four warriors gets featured in her own story. And since I'm not a romance writer, it's not a romance, but I love reading romance. So each one gets their, their own love interest in, in romance because I have to have that. That's just me. <laughs> no, I, I completely get that. Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, Jocelyn does stay throughout the series, though. Yes, she's, you know, you'll get glimpses of her and definitely more in book four when uh, when we get all four of them together, but yes. The Unclaimed Wolf was just released two days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two days ago, that's right. <laughs> and uh, we already have the fourth in the series, which is the Moonlit Warrior. Mm -hmm. Is this where the series ends or...? Yes, it'll be completed with the Moonlit Warrior in September. I'm very excited. Um, I'm also excited to start a new series and some new stuff. But uh, yeah, I may, so, have, I may have cheered up a little bit when I finished that first draft because it was like, this is I know. it, the end. <laughs> so pretty special. Say, saying goodbye, giving them the proper send off, the mm -hmm. one that, that both readers and you want. <laughs> Assuming they lived. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they all died. We're going to have to wait until September to find out. <laughs> but now is the perfect time to get involved in the series. And the first three are out now. And then um, hopefully uh, we can pre-order the Moonlit Warrior uh, sometime uh or in the fall i guess yeah i'll probably start bugging you guys about that in august or so reminding you that i have another book although i do want to do some uh since it's going to be the end of the series i'm planning some more some more fun things some giveaways maybe some fun art stuff actually i get some character art from uh Cine draws 
and she's amazing. And she's, uh, I've been commissioning headshots for my uh, different warriors from her. And they're so good. And I am planning something bigger with her for the fourth one I'm very excited about. And I'll probably put it on some kind of, some kind of swag for, awesome. for giveaways. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. Well, Definitely have all of your links to your social media in the um, in the description of the video. So guys, make sure to, to check that out along with the Amazon page where you can find all of EP's uh, books in the series and um, make sure to keep uh, checking that to see whenever the uh, Moonlit Warrior goes on pre-sale this fall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you have such a varied cast of characters in this, in this series many types of uh, characters. And uh, who would you say felt the closest to you? Jocelyn, I mean, you already answered though, Jocelyn. She's well, Jocelyn's my favorite in a way because she was my first one I made. And right. uh, I kind of put all my favorite stuff right in that first book, you know, cause I didn't know if I'd write more books, you know, I was kind of like, can I write a book? Can I kind of get it done? And, and I did, spoilers. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd say they all have, a little bit of me in them somewhere, like a different aspect. Uh, I like to think Lily, she's in the second book. She's the, she's so gentle and kind. And I, I like to think that I have some of that. She's got my mother, my mother tendencies in there. So I think, well, we, I do, no. <laughs> I think, I think we do definitely uh, draw inspiration from, from uh, the things that either people that are in our lives uh, or who have been in our lives or ourselves and put that into the character, which makes them so much more believable and lets the reader get more invested in a character that feels more real because they're based off of real traits that we've yeah. seen and kind of accumulated. So uh, beyond the Chandri series, um, you're working on your next, uh, your, your next series. So you're kind of, you, you're like me, you're, you're a series, a series <laughs> addict. You can't just, I, cause I don't do well with, with, with the standalone. Yeah. Just, well, actually I, I am working on a standalone right now. I oh. haven't started my next series yet. I'm working on a novella and oh, okay. uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm not going to say it's, it's different. It's more of a psychological thriller but with also with romance and more, it's not YA because I use a lot stronger language in it, but it's still got that younger feel. So maybe it's NA. I always have such a hard time with genres. So I've got some alpha readers who I know. Find, find that answer for me. I know. Uh, it, it's so tough whenever you write under any, well, I mean, any, any genre you have. For, for instance, you know, the fantasy genre, you have, uh, you have fantasy, and then under that, then you have magical realism, and then you have urban fantasy, and then you have, da, 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 you have all of these subgenres. Yeah. And you kind of have to figure out where your book fits. Yeah. And they don't always have the right categories on Amazon, you're trying to put them in, you're like, uh, I know, and, and, and new adult is so new that um a lot of you kind of have to look for that i think on amazon it's called college i think it's called college yeah what? i'm not sure but uh, college fiction and if you call it new adult and it's like some people they expect like i don't really write sex scenes in my work i have no problem reading them they're fine I just right don't like, i don't really like putting them in my stories and uh but also, so it's like, do they expect that if, if you say it's new adults, they're like, well, worse, <laughs> skip to this. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, you're the worst two stars. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that, that some of the expectations that, that, um, that you have for young adult definitely get bumped up once you go ahead and label it new adult. But all you're yeah. trying to say is, you know, I use some strong language that you yeah. know, I don't want a 16 year old to read. Exactly. You know, so Your because characters are maybe you know right. like, like 20, 21. It's like, is this really young adult or is this new adult? And... Right, exactly. No, but the uh the Chandri series is definitely it is young adults. Yes, I keep it pretty clean, pretty clean. And what do uh what do you want readers, especially it's so girl power centric 
and strong, uh, strong female characters. Oh yeah. Did I, did you, did you engineer that for, for a reason? Um, or did it just kind of organically happen? I think it was more organic just because I feel more comfortable writing female characters. Although I do write dual points of view. So I do technically write the male character as well, but right. I just, and as a reader, I like reading about strong women. I like reading, a, you know, female centered story. That's just what I like personally. And that's how I like to write is what I like. So I think that's just, that's why. I think, I, I think that's a great message for, for young adults um, that are, uh, especially girls who are, you know, picking up the books to have strong, uh, because that's, that's where we are. It's 2021, baby. I mean, we're, we're, yeah. you know, we're, sh we're taking over. So, so um, yeah, to give those to healthy relationships and strong female characters, I think is, is awesome. So what, uh, the one question that I always try and ask, because it's a learning process, it's always, as an independent author, there's always something new to learn. So what advice have you found that you've learned after three books that you found invaluable um, and you wish you would have known in the beginning? Oh, man. <laughs> Something I wish I would have known in the beginning. I wish I had known in the beginning that when you are typing your your word things out, if you use the tab key to indent and then you put it into Kindle Create, it looks good and it's all fine until your digital copy goes up on Kindle and people look at it on their phone and, and it's actually like the sentences start like halfway into the screen. And you may not even realize that until someone points it out to you a month later and you're like, oh no, reformat. So that would have been nice to know, I think. That gotcha. now, I, now I set it in the paragraph. I set it to like whatever indents and now we seem to be okay. But oof, that was, that was not so much fun for me. <laughs> no, the whole thing. Kindle Create, you know, they have their own, uh, th their own program that you can use. And that is, it is not an easy program. I mean, for me, it was not an easy program to learn how to use. I've gotten better at it um, because I messed That's up at it so many times and had to re-upload. <laughs> yeah. But it's all, it, it's all learning, a learning experience. So, yeah. I guess also with that kind of the same thing as uh, I've had, like, you know, you, you try so hard to get all your typos right before it comes out, but then inevitably someone messages you and say, oh, here's a typo. So I always try to go in and fix those, but, but be pre the formatting, I was fixing them right in Kindle Create, you know, and then re-uploading it and not in my old manuscript. And then when I had to go back and reformat, I didn't remember where the typos were. And I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> So like, oh, it's just, so that's formatting. Formatting has been my nemesis in this whole process. And I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting better. Each release gets a little cleaner. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, I, well, you know, for my first two, I didn't, I didn't do uh, headers, um, like um, the, there's like an actual word, the heading, the head, uh, you know, the header and footer. I didn't do a header uh, on the first two that I did. And so um, I actually had to go back and, 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 and redo that whenever someone said. And then, oh yeah, justified. Make sure that all of your, your text is justified because if it's, if it's, you know, just as you type it, if it's not justified, then it looks kind of funky on the, on, on, on the thing. So yeah. yeah, I had to learn some formatting some formatting stuff the hard way too so yeah. that can really throw readers that will just they'll just stop you know if they're not invested in it they'll be like oh, i'm not reading this so yeah true but uh but i'm definitely i i i, I do want to pick up the first book um we were talking earlier and i think you and i kind of have the same the same view on 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 yeah <laughs> the same writing style and uh we're yeah 
So guys, definitely now's the time uh, um, to get invested in the Chandri series uh, with the first book. And then, uh, so you've got, you've got one, two, three already there. And then in the fall. Yeah. Then, uh, oh, I also have um, this month. I haven't been promoting it because book three was coming out and I didn't want yes. to overdo it. But uh, I'm also in a collaborative anthology, which is coming out on the 29th. And it's for charity. All the proceeds are going to Project Night Night, which is, I believe, for kids in, I think it's homeless kids. It goes to making care packages and stuff for them. But uh, but it's a, it's a bunch of authors from a lot of them on Twitter and uh, such as Carol Buff Anderson and Kate McDonald and some people I'm really excited to be working with. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all retellings of fairy tales told from the villain's perspective and it's called Villainous. And it's out this month on the 29th and I did a Bluebeard retelling for it that I really like. Um, so definitely check it out. Villainous, guys, remember the name. Is it going to be listed under your author page? Yes, uh, it should be. Okay. It's definitely linked to me on Goodreads because I know they, they've got it up there. I don't know if it's linked to me on Amazon yet, uh, but I'll have to look into that because I didn't, I didn't do any of that. I wrote the story and I gave it to someone else and I didn't do all the work. <laughs> Well, that, that is awesome. I always love to hear about books that are for a good cause where the, the, the proceeds go to charity. So if, if, um, if you guys want to, to come back on and talk about that a little later, then that would be awesome. And definitely guys, um, make sure that you check out the, um, uh, all of EP's, um, social media and, uh, Amazon links in the description so that you can find out whenever that book comes out too so well, thank yeah. you so so much for being on today and for for introducing us to the shandri warriors uh, and um and guys uh again the third book the unclaimed uh, the untamed wolf uh just came out yes yes Oh, awesome. <laughs> the Unclaimed Wolf just came out two days ago. So make sure that you go pick up your copies now. And yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and leave a review. Leave a review. Um, I always uh, forget to mention that, but uh, it really does help us out whenever you, whenever you leave a review, uh, especially on Goodreads and on Amazon. So... <laughs> Thanks again, EP. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Stay safe and stay healthy, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks.